because of all the media support. But group or organization has been somehow. I do need to approve the amendment, the little amendment. Um, at 505, if we can add something about um, uh, changing the, the, the pay structure, it's impossible. Uh, okay, so that's the amendment. I'm going to add that to the agenda. Then we'll add that to the agenda at 525. Uh, all right. I have questions about the timing. Sure. Because yeah. we really don't have. 30 minutes and six o'clock for that, and then we just have 15 minutes. And the same thing with the NBA relationship, we really just have 15 minutes for adjourning six and three. Oh, we can, we can adjust those times if you'd like. That's an oversight. So it's 15 minutes for each of those. Thanks, Jared. Okay. Is anyone taking a meeting? Is someone taking a meeting in it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that we've done that, so the transcript we have here, so we've got a great copy. Yeah, just in the last meeting, I can try to something like that. There isn't. This should be a problem. So, laptop. Is that you? Yeah. I can't, I can't really do it on my computer, though, this is a good I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to get into trouble with my laptop. Okay. Um, I can also just take him and He'll be, I know the top of the chat street, so he'll be very short. Thank you. He'll be here very quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, we all have the main agenda. Uh, Hi. Uh, it's moving on to introductions. Of course, you want to create a follow street or sort of great. I'm trying to see how to do it too. Jonathan Chavis, local Ward 1. Carol Livingston, Ward 1. Jessica Rock Vince, <laughs> Ward 3. Plus, Professional Ward 2, and Creativity Engagement Specialist. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, public forums next. Not seeing anybody here in person or on the uh, agenda. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to public forum? A couple things. Okay. Um, one is that um, both Jonathan Miller on the board of uh, Friends of Fletcher Free Library. Um, and what's coming up in June for us is um, we've been awarded by um, City Market the opportunity to do the rally for change, which is when you round up, you go through and buy your groceries, and they ask you to round up and whatever percent that you want to do. And we'll receive 1% of that, um, that round up, which is considerable. So we're just trying to get that this way out. So anyway, that you all publicize that in your NPAs or your partner's forms, whatever, we will do the same thing. But, um, that would be great. And the period is a month of June. Starts on the And then I have one more thing, unless there are questions about that. Mm -hmm. Um, it goes towards the friends, and the friends provide a lot of um, most of the funds with all the program. We get very little savings, most of the donations from selling books and doing book sales and all the ridiculous friends. That's how the life is in terms of particularly now with all the in service that we provide for staff and we've been going through a lot of that's from the friends. Hi, Tom. Yeah. We're one to all represent Another word one. How are you doing? How are you doing? Got a baby. Do you join us? No, I just came down to say. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, another question, another question that I had was, um, is I'm wondering if it makes sense to try to put money in the CEDO budget for a uh, sort of line item for our meetings and food. Or I was wondering, because I remember we, we did get asked to pay a an amount and that got pulled off um, to contribute to a food for the all awards meetings or whatever the other expenses are for the all awards meetings. I'm just wondering how that gets funded and if that's something that would be helpful for us to ask about. And Sure, it gets included. 
Yeah, so um, we see paid for food for the All Words, the last two All Words meetings I organized um, through other means outside of NPA budgets. But that's probably something you want to consider depending on how frequently you have your All Words meetings, if you want to have food, something like that. Uh, I don't think that they can continue to do that necessarily. So, Any further analysis for anybody? Uh, next, two weeks from today, June 12th, at the Institute of Anything Performing Arts Center, the Film House will be having a uh, <coughs> film screening panel discussion on uh, the film Love in the Time of Time Health, uh, which traces the Overdose Prevention Center in Vancouver, followed by the panel discussion and our camp training. So, I'll be hearing some more that. The awards will be free and be able to uh, sign on for us to support. So, uh, we will be pertinent in as well. So, thank you, and thanks to our sponsor. Did anybody from that organization ask CCTV to record the panel discussion? Uh, there has been some conversation that I have had about it before. It's Jerry. Um, Juneteenth, that is how that city of Burlington has a large event going on for that on June 15th, Saturday, from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And um, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., a bunch of different organizations and city departments will be tickling. I will be out there tickling on behalf of the NPA, so I would love any volunteers who want to help me table. Uh, so keep it in mind to be free anytime on June 15th between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Let me know. Thank you, Pastor. I mean, on that note, we will be having to file uh, that information and add it to the end of the year as well. So, any other words about file on the free? Any last? No, that's everything. That moving on, uh, all words meeting schedule is a very small representation tonight. I think it had suggested that perhaps we could go with keep it Wednesday of the month. That's the situation will be that goes along with moving forward. Uh, but I'm going to stick with it unless there's strong objection. We begin that schedule in fall, uh, unless there are folks who are really, really want to come to the flat third person. Put your things together. Uh, five, five, maybe. Yeah. Which is more than what we do now. So yeah, that's so that, yeah. 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 Uh, and even better than the Bush Road. Bush Road is a little bit stainless steel. It's a little cold. Yeah. So I would, I would say that if we are serious about the time and we made a request, we probably get the picture of it. Very, very pleasure with every wrong uh, question. Wednesday. Wednesday. So we just have to be out by eight. So I'm not hearing a motion to hold the NPA, all our NPA on the fifth Wednesday at the picture library. Favor of the letter. I will do that. Sure. Second. All right. Any objections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, I will get a question. All right. Yeah, John. Uh, next up is the uh, discussion item about city has a conversation. Oh, <clears throat> just add it. So yes. I'm really just, I, I've been thinking about this for a while. It's um, the fact that our city councilors work a lot. Um, they're uncompensated, essentially uncompensated, and they're essentially unstaffed. Um, it, it means a lot of things. Uh, one is that it limits the number of the, the, the uh, it limits the group of people who can actually serve, and it limits them in unusual ways. Um, the, you know, the obvious way is that people who are independently wealthy can, can do it, as they got all the time in the world. They want. But there are other groups that decide to be independently wealthy, that can take advantage of their, their situation to serve. 
you know, one example would be folks um, who are um, who have very little expenses, and so they have, they they can they can raise they can earn less money and spend more time at city councils. Um, there are some folks, uh, there are city councilors who have expressed uh, concern about the fact that it's very hard if you have a family and you're supporting the family um, to to serve because you have to take time off the work and your work may stop there and that can uh, And then you also don't get to see the kids. So <clears throat> one, um, one answer to this would be to actually make it a paid position. If it's a paid position, it would, um, it might open the door to more people, uh, more people, more, more um, uh, financial situations who could serve. Um, and and I, I have kind of a bias that I think that parties play too big a role in politics in the city. And part of that is because city councilors just don't have time to do stuff. But if they were actually paid for a half-time job site, then they may act more independently from the group thing that tends to happen so much in our, in our little city council. So I'm interested in starting to study this. I don't know anything about it. I don't know. I know that big cities always have paid, paid city councilors, and little towns generally know. Uh, but beyond that, and Christian is an arithmetic that's going to cost uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year for the city, maybe, to do it. It's, it's 60 dollars, 16000 per city council. That's still ready, maybe it's 300 k um, It's not a huge amount of money. It may not even believe it exists, but, but it's, it's in the realm of study. So what I'm interested in is, if there's anybody interested in starting a little set of study group, um, I don't have any idea how this will play out and how long it will take, but I think it's, I want to start the conversation. And if there's anybody who's interested in joining the conversation, um, you know, I thought to begin with, talk to ex city counselors just to see their, their perspective on it. Um, finding other towns have done, have done this with Don from the page to the city council. Um, and, and kind of work from there and see it as a, I don't know, it's a five-year project? I don't know. But, um, you know, it would be a, ch a charter change for sure. And so it takes some time. Is it, if there's anything in this room that's interested, I'd, I'd be very happy to start working with you. Otherwise, I just want to put it on the table. Thank you. But um, uh, would that be accompanied by perhaps a restructuring of city council to go to say you know seven councilors instead of whatever we have now? I I think that may be a different question, but I don't know that it would have to be a different question. Um, I, you know, I guess as you work out the as you work out the details of how you have a paid council, some of that stuff might actually play in. I I don't know. Um, I also think, and, and again, this is, you know, this is like, I don't, I don't wait at night trying to figure stuff out, but it seems like it would be inappropriate for a city council to work on this. Um, so that's why I'm thinking, right? I mean, so that's why I'm thinking that maybe a, a, an all wards or an NBA kind of group, you know, subset, or just regular citizens might be a good group to start with. Yeah. Um. Love the suggestion. Just curious as the estimate can be a bit of a because I feel like um, the one thing that I would be concerned about is making a position that is paid and then it not also you have the sort of the medical benefits that come with it because then I think at least we don't have to Um Yeah, do you? Do. Yeah, the calculation I did not include benefits. Like that's so you have a yeah. Okay. yeah. As well, but it was based on the assumption of the basis of informal conversation. Uh, current one counselors would be giving typically maybe like 20 hours a week, mm -hmm. uh, 40 hours a year. So that comes out to 50,600 per person, which for 12 counselors is 187,200. Yeah. So maybe it's fine. Okay. So to that point, um, I feel like, for example, if there was a city council who then reduced their hours because they would be getting paid for the city council position, and then they lost the benefits from the job that they were trying to get benefits from. That's the situation I'm imagining. Um, so just taking that into account, because I don't know if that's true for a lot of lot of organizations at that time. That time work. Yeah, I think that's a. Um, I think that's really important um, because it's got it's got to be um, transparent for payments. It can't you can't if you're going to lose for doing it. You might as well have to do it. 
So, um, so uh, clearly, I mean, there could be some folks who take a salary from that. I think that, that's the they just wouldn't. That's the way the university does it. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I think those are exactly the sort of things that we should be talking about. Um, because otherwise, it makes no sense. Well, I just want to know my own discussion. Yeah, I think those are all good points that make sense to include that in the discussion. I would not uh, have that kind of provided by the course. Right. So, but with respect to Tom's comments, uh, if you have a conversation today, you can get a sense that there are still some people uh, really would like to see us move back to the model and catch you guys in the federal election for a lot of laws. They'd like to get 60 counselors, so that we're not going to be able to propose a guy that can come up with class and do that in the next while. Sort of the right. Any further comments on this? Sounds like I'm happy to help you out with that. Anyone wants to have you look at the point person back? And it would be in the notes for people who other MPA members. Yeah. Contact John. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's exciting. I'm just going to think of how I'm going to put together a master list with that all our MBA with one of our states that those are all down. Yeah. I think we have to has it. I have emails for everyone. Yeah. I just send that out. Maybe I missed it. And you're all in the Google group, so um, you, can, you should be able to see. Well, there's two Google groups, right? There's the all our MBA SC, which is this group of planning group, and then there's the all there, as far as I know, there's only one because all the steering committee members from all the NPAs throughout the city that's the all words NPAs that you're coming to. Set that up. I did. Okay. So it can be each board, maybe get like access to this so we can have people say about the job. Yeah. Okay. You have. I mean, like when we add a sweet cover. Yeah, I keep doing it. Um, but yeah, I guess I have to see how that works. Like people start like if lots of people are in there, like making changes. I don't know. But um, yeah, we can participate. Okay. But at least we register with you the changes. Yeah, I think you can publish. Yeah, yeah. maybe you send them out for an email out. Yeah, some people to might I don't know. Um, not be comfortable with all their like personal information being given out. So I just uh, there was a period of time when everybody's personal contact information was on the uh, website, not just email, but from each other thing called call your city council to the main commissioners, but you know, it's a challenging. Um, I do recall their name, all words NPA, I'll double check on that. Uh, if they're, they're ready to help figure that out. It's uh, my main sense is. to have an all words general purpose. Communication out with people that are interested across the city. Because that kind of all the works made this case, you know, all the public, the IAC, including any members who are not necessarily the city. Yeah, I mean, it's posted on the website and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys could do more outreach about it. Yeah. 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 Uh, we'll move on to the um, discussion about NPA representation and see in our committee just kind of what to have was going to be the discussion of starting the tax package report complex. Uh, so Jonathan and I will show you. Oh, that's what she said. Yes. Um, so, hopefully, you all are aware of the resolution um, Jonathan created and um, was brought before City Council a month ago, maybe? They say and the council voted to support it and to send it to, thank you, um, voted to send it to the CDNR committee, which is two years ago, uh, the revitalization committee. And that's chaired by Carter and Beezer. Um, Evan Littman is on the committee, as well as Joe Kane. So the three of them um, that the first time, actually, um, and a few of us were able to come um, to that meeting, and we talked about the next steps. And um, the proposal was that the committee becomes get formed of um, maybe two or three MPA folks, 
um, and perhaps some CEDO folks, perhaps um, you know other people who might be interested in city council, I'm sure, certainly the city councilor and CEO person. Um, <clears throat> basically, to figure out, and I'm assuming you all have read this, have access to this resolution, you're familiar with the resolution. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's basically, um, it's basically saying that um, there have been instances where the NPA, the impact on neighborhoods, um, has been um, up for discussion in the council. In fact, the city council has passed ordinances that have direct bearing with the on neighbors without the NPAs uh, participating in any of the discussion and giving feedback to the city councilors about the repercussions of some other decisions. So, um, Jonathan created this resolution basically saying to NPAs and to city councilors, can we look at our relationship? Can we be clearer about how we operate together? Can we be more intentional and deliberate around you know, uh, how we interact with one another? So it sounds pretty enormous, but it's mostly looking at how can city council and PA take, the, uh, take advantage of one another's involvement in the city and get information and process information and uh, get recommendations so that the city council decisions um, and the work of the MPA are better coordinated. Um, we'll give you some examples of when that is not worked, but we want to be well aware um, of those times. Um, so this resolution was, was passed, it was sent to um, the CDNR, the CDNR was asking that we um, nominate some folks to sit on a committee that would then look at the logistics of how, how this process might work to improve the relationship between the NPA and the city Maybe just that, um, <laughs> maybe just that, um, the NBA's had, um, they represent this, a very a very specific subset of each ward. Um, folks who come to the meeting are about fully represented of the whole ward. Uh, I mean, one of the reasons why that may be, you don't exactly know, one of the reasons why that may be is that what, what the NBA is doing, what the NBA is doing is not relevant to certain parts of the community. And you think that the city council is the position to help. A lot of relevance of the MPAs. If the MPAs are doing more and more work, <clears throat> then maybe more people would want to be engaged. If the city council treated the uh, regarded the MPAs as a real uh, an arm of arm of governance and a uh, and a uh, uh, kind of extension of the work of the, of the city council for and when I say city council, I mean also uh, administration departments, then. Then maybe more and more people want to get engaged. So that's another component of this. That is, that is to build the uh, it's to build the consensus of who it is who is on, this, on the NPAs, who participates in the NPAs, as well as to clarify so that there's no no confusion or no misunderstanding that certain things certain things that city council does that city council does really needs how much. And, and the NBA is the tool for that kind of operation. Um, What's interesting is that there are, the NBAs don't have any power that's, that's prescribed and written. It's all influence, it's sounding board, it's initiating, you can initiate um, letters and petitions. Um, We've done that resolutions. That's where this came from. Is our FDA. Um, so we have that kind of power of a low, a low, um, lowercase p. But there is there is no reason for anyone to listen to any of this in terms of the realities of what of powers. Now that may not that may not shift with this either, but it's it's part of the conversation. Oh. 
Yeah, I agree. We um, FBAs don't have much authority, but we also don't have defined responsibility either. So, I mean, you're to go down this path. You're going to have to say, what are we going to what are we going to sign up for? Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so um, I started uh, working on a project to to try to legally define the relationship between the NPAs and the city of world. So I've actually contacted a couple of lawyers and they're interested in just giving, you know, like research discovering what the actual legal relationship is between the NPAs and the city. So my thought is, or the way I explained it to them without any conversation with any steering committee members, is that this would be paid for, it wouldn't be much, would be definitely a thousand dollars. That the NPAs would use some of their twenty five hundred dollar allotment. So if every NPA just kicked in a hundred dollars, um, that needs to be done. So what I'm going to explain to the lawyers is that I'm looking for a legal opinion, and then I'm looking for a second. Opinion. So if you take the word of the first legal opinion, you get into another lawyer too to try to establish somewhere where you would be comfortable. In understanding our relationship with the city. So, um, in fact, I just sent out an email to someone seeking information on something concerning this. But I just wanted to find out once and for all what is the legal relationship between the entities and the city? Is it a part of state government or is it not? Does it have independence in certain areas or not? So, because right now, obviously, as you were saying, the city council can just basically do what they like with us at this point. And frankly, I've been disturbed at the relationship between the CLs and the MPAs for the last six months, if not the last five years. So that's going to initiate that. So I would just like to know what is the actual relationship. We want to keep it there, we want to make an adjustment, whatever. So I'm not making a motion at this time, I'm just looking for the steering committee members across the city or anyone else that would be interested in the project. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Uh -huh. I just want to caution, like, promising any funding for this, if, if that has been done without having spoken to the PAs or steering committees. Um, yeah, I just want to caution that so people aren't doing that work, expecting being paid for it, with, you know, without there being a process for that in place and provided by like, the MPAs, bylaws, and stuff. Okay, so when I explained it to the lawyers is that their pay would be contingent upon getting that money from the MPAs. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I mean, under no circumstances, ask CEO permission to do this under any circumstances. This is something that the MPAs need to do. Just like, like the example I use is like, what would happen if the Supreme Court of the state of Vermont was told by the governor's office and the legislature, we're going to get rid of your staff, we're going to provide your staff for that staff's going to be hired by the governor's office and the legislature. They're going to be paid by them, they're going to be retained or dismissed by them, and uh, they're basically going to report to the governor and not necessarily to the Supreme Court itself. So that's kind of the situation that we have right now. And so my point is that we need to control our own destiny, and I don't need permission from the CEO office and the mayor's office to proceed on this. With all due respect to everyone. Thank you. So it makes sense, I think, given our time, unless folks have other things that they want to add. I think what's important to come out of right now is um, three people who would be interested in serving as representatives from the NPAs um, to serve on the CDNR committee. Um, and, and your task would be to meet however, however often is decided by, by the committee. Um, and then to to serve on the committee and then represent us um, and keep us as all awards folks um, updated on a regular basis of 
of the progresses and the discussions and recommendations. So I, I guess I would I would move to um, I would make a motion to choose three people to serve on this committee. Um, on the CDNR committee. Is there a second? Well, uh, question. What would be the process for selecting the all orders and getting a selection of the individuals to serve out with the promise made for each individual board? Is everyone there? I would say that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, three of those are to pay for that. So, mm -hmm. just from my perspective, I'll make sure we have a robust process so that everyone can see what's happening. So, if we can pull tonight, sit in a meeting up here and recognize that there's cars inside that can be presented. So, I think it's probably presented in a moment here in that situation. Yeah, process. I think, I think, yeah, and I only read the minutes, but I think the CDNR minutes say that they think the all wards should select the committee, the, the committee members coming from the activity and get representative. So that's that would be the first step. Rather than the individuals. Rather than going back to the MPA. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, Jessica, I'm back. Um, I was just wait, this would be a voting situation, you vote as to whether that person would be representing on the uh, committee. It could be, it's however we choose, or three people volunteer to the support. So I, I don't have a preference. Just, just that point, I guess it would have to be all wards. That's going to be the case, also, I didn't know. Yeah. I'm going to interject here, so I'd like to suggest that we want to have first representation. A lot of three people are two people saying age is probably too big a number. We do have four districts. Maybe the CNR would consider that fourth person, not only the full one in each district, not to the geographic representation and the other people are. I want to express a, a slightly different dimension, and that's that whoever these people are, we need to sort of agree as to what. Relationship they're going to be advocates for. So, as in all words, we sort of have to say this is the relationship we're looking for, and then those people should represent us and be an honor to try to get that relationship. Or else, you, you're likely to have four people who have four different ideas, and I don't know what would happen. Did you ask that for that? Sorry? Did you ask that for that? No, no, I'm just looking at it. Yeah, I mean, you got to think this through. It's going to be an all wards. It's just it's going to be a work here. The, the all wards at the end provide our occupation. It seems to be that there would be a format. I'm just not sure that we can get, you know, it's set up. I think we're going to be moving in this direction. I would advocate that they have a more frequent extension so that the work that's being done by our occupation in conjunction with CDR has an opportunity to come back by a feedback and collaborate. Um, I don't think it's interesting. Oh, I, um, I think it was supposed to be. Um, I guess I'm a little more concerned with when, when this group could actually make a selection committee for your proposal numbers. Um, if there's a committee form, it's not, it's, it's fairly straightforward to that way you can read out and, you know, or by email or by group, um, and check in with that one. Even if we will be regularly over the summer and fall. But if we're not going to meet in September, I don't know how we'll select a group. Uh, I, 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 I think that that's one of my concerns is that if, if this group, say we select a group tonight, right? And then they negotiate something that says that NPAs have to meet every four weeks or every month so we don't take the summers off. Um, I, I guess I don't, I don't see that in the goal of the, of the resolution. But it's, not, just, it's not to yeah. rewrite bylaws or set bylaws, it's to figure out the relationship between um, the, the I, 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 Jesse, I, 
right. Yeah, I think it's that point. Um, I don't know if I knew that there had to be a consensus of the MK of this or the MK of what we would advocate for, but I think that the purpose of the committee is to discuss and to sort of work through that um, problem um, there. And I, and I think to your point, I agree. I think, you know, if we go into position soon, if, if, and if we get to this void of summer, um, there is very big anything that is going to happen. And so I'm not sure as to a consensus between the people nominated. I think that the committee is to work through these, um, this issue. Um, so, yeah. Just I can agree with that sentiment. My other concern is that if we do not, I don't know if we have to do this, but it's not on the agenda that we'd be potentially appointing people for this, and then we don't have a significant number of representations from the events on that intersection. Would that make a difference on that? So, from the perspective of fairness, we have to Did the council of uh, this committee give a date by which? time they wanted to have a presentation on this. Mm -hmm. okay. I would point out mm -hmm. that Evan Litton, who's from the New England, served on the NPA for a number of years. Um, ben Travers um, served on the NPA. Um, I'm trying to think. Carter did. Yeah, Carter did. Yeah, Carter Ward One. And Sarah, I think Sarah served as uh, anybody. Um, I mean, I understand the concern about, about representation, though I'm not, I don't, I don't know that geographical difference plays into the kinds of discussions and decisions that we're hoping that this committee would have. But at the same time, you're raising that you, it's important that everybody had the opportunity who would like to serve on I'm just concerned that you know, we're trying to lead out on a resolution, and if we stall on not having parts of you know contributors to the committee, it feels like we're setting us back. But I understand that we don't have everybody. So, uh, so I'm more probably more intensely interested in pursuing this than anybody on the planet. But my suggestion is that we do delay this to September, the September all awards. That all summer basically informs steering committee members about this possibility. In the meantime, there's nothing to prevent anyone from attending CDNR meetings. So let's say I was interested in being on the committee. There's nothing to prevent me to start pointing these meetings to get a feeling for how they work, et cetera. And I'm getting accustomed to, to the, the standing committee itself. Uh, there's nothing to prevent us from uh, going to these meetings and just feeling that out, just seeing how it works, and then having a final decision. Because I'd rather have it have done correctly rather than doing the rush. I'd rather have it done in September than May or June, personally. I want to make a couple. Procedure and comments. <clears throat> this, this agenda item is the NPA's representation on CDNR committee. If other other members of all wars doesn't understand that, understand that as figuring out the NPA's representation and not a CDNR committee, I don't know what to say. It's not, I guess it doesn't say actually to it, but it's fairly clear what is what the meaning, even in the title of the, of the agenda item. So I'm not. I'm not worried about hurting someone's feeling because they didn't come because they didn't know this was on the agenda. The, the other procedural piece is we're we're pretending this is a much formal group than it really is. We don't have formal appointments in this group. We may, we should have appointments in this group, but we don't have them. So if we if we want to start building a formal structure around all the words that requires all that kind of stuff. We need a bylaw, a long word bylaws committee, right? <clears throat> Try to get a little bit together and say anything like that. I guess my point is, I don't want to go in that direction. We, we may have to, but I don't really want to go in that direction because I think that it lose the spirit of a group of people getting together and trying to figure out how to make a sit down. 
who doesn't have any authority, <laughs> um, which is the way I see the NBA is going to see California. I think I think less formality is going to be better. That said, I understand that the you know we've got three people from one NBA and three people from another NBA sitting in this room, and there's a bunch of other NBA. So I understand the problem, but I'm I'm not sure it's insurmountable. For example, um, I, I think the intention is that members of all wards participate. And by members of all wards, it's, it's the population steering committees and local wards. Uh, uh, the, the, the people joining this committee are, are people who are steering committees. I think that's the idea. Steering committees understand that they're the other people, how they're based because they're making them more themselves. So I can imagine um, asking every steering committee, is there any steering committee you want to join? And then if, uh, say, so now we're going to have to find out if there's any steering committee, I don't know what to do. But like, if, you know, this seems like a great little process where everybody feels amazing. And then there's a little number generating picture. If there are that many together, the board of three people actually exist. And this can be done you know, if, if you want to do it. Um, I don't think we need to make this a bigger deal than that. Just pick some people to, to participate. Charlie, in your point, I don't think this committee will meet. The committee will not meet until their steering committee members are So it's not like going to the CDM or make any, any impact. In, you won't really learn anything about going to the CDM. Because it's not as won't be a CDNR committee, a committee formed by CDNR, one city council, one or two CDNR members, I think is the way it's described, and then three votes from the district. Something like that. What would be the downside of when it gets to September? It's from our perspective, if we get to September, we all need to get to the fair. How many people are going to be done in September? Tell me. I don't know if it's the type of all but if. There is all of our representation was done at that time, recognizing each individual that we had roughly we started in September. We would have right communication follow up meetings right now. Uh, most of the cases are going to be June, I think, so on. So your question is about how does this committee react to the NPAs? That's the, that's what your concern is. I'm just wondering how that how would the interaction with the NPA center. So I'm just wondering how how was the harm? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the CDN, the city hour, the tens. I don't know what the, I don't know what the CDN thinks about this. I don't know. Um, I think I support moving quicker with the decision um, based on the fact that you would expect there would be sort of an established like, um, expectation of reporting back to the awards um, meetings. Um, I also think that uh, that feels like there's momentum right now, and I feel like if we wait till September, there's going to be a drop off in momentum, and I think October is going to be a sort of time wave. Um, and so, yeah, and I think to your point, yeah, who's going to attend the next football speed? And we, we have another situation where it's just us here, and like, oh, well, I'll wait for the next one. And it's just going to continue a cycle like that. And I also believe that it's okay to swap out people. I think that is absolutely appropriate as well. Just sure. swap out people, including if need be, if someone's uh, time becomes a, an issue in, in, in the tab that we're moving on with, then fine. We'll, we'll talk about it and I'll say it is. And if they ask them to attend the committee rather than that person, and if, I don't think there's anything saying that, that these people on this committee have to stay there as, as long as we establish, you know, sort of reporting uh, back to the whole so I you think there's two issues in play here. I think there's still the relationship with the NPA. You know, I'm sitting and working on this issue, but basically, you know, we think there is a expansion of the budget and we can defend the big program. So you have to take the plan to actually make the original resolution to be suggested. And then something that gets you an edge of the partners for the city. And if they're looking to move in that direction, the model of services is the appropriate time. Uh, so we talked about a number of different ideas uh, and how we can move forward. Um, 
so long for the motion. Uh, I had a hand just so that we can take a vote, make a decision. Um, uh, I move that uh, I move that this that the the all board steering committee has to rise tonight solicits all the board all all the MPA steering committees for interest in participating in uh, in this committee and uh, collecting names and then selecting their names for like we have yeah. Okay, motion well, has have moved to Saturday to uh, beat followers and the AS prize tonight. She'll make a recommendation to reach out to all the constituents that the AS is considered to be candidates at the time. All the interested candidates are included for that, and we'll draw it together. Let's see again there. Hi, Evan. Yeah. Evan, you can hear us? You just come on. Yeah, just Evan, can you hear us? <laughs> Evan, can you hear us? Are you on mute? Yes, you're muted. Um, I'm not. I'm not seeing a hand. So, be gracious, example. Come on. Uh, so the motion, motion to move is second. It's a great discussion on the motion. So can we? So who is taking the direction of uh, implementing that? I can be back to send an email to the group and asking each. Well, maybe we can decide we some discussion. Is it each more each more? Steering committee, or is it each each candidate steering committee? There'd be like one one that we can max for each of them that go to that. That's not that sounds good today. And then you know, is, it, is it one more or is one steering? I mean, if if two words meet as a steering committee, I would say one one name for the chair and one thirty seven. There are no two ways. There are two separate organizations that have chosen to cooperate with the purpose of setting a shared agenda and sharing meaning the lead with their separate organizations. Yes. Which is by the bylaws. Which is by the law. But by your bylaws. So by the war, 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 the Well, if you look at the controlling resolution, it was very clearly established. The, the NPAs were kind of established by the war. It's about the fact that every war had a set of bylaws. Every work on it has its own set of elections that are voted by our work and a back of the fund itself. So we do have a situation in parts of the city where you have two separate activities that have a history of cooperating for each other for sharing, you know, joint meeting. But at the end of the day, there are technically several organizations that have been filed with things that just need. So just as a, as a point of so point board there for six years, or the work on a steering committee had one member. So I I I should friendly amendment would be to send a message out to all eight wards, have a deadline, and if they don't meet the deadline, then whatever names we have, we'll put in the hat and select it. So so it would be one per award. One you have to ask one name for one. One pick one yeah. That's it. And, and give them a deadline. So it's not like yes, of course. Yes. We can consult with that. And uh, have a Oh, we want to know first of all. Is there any job obligation about this staff and it's a CD and our company will get a look for? And those are right now on the record. Well, I'll read you those and we'll discuss it in a reasonable process here. The numerous uh, assets that have been discussed here. Yeah, there are some skills. I I um I emailed Carter um, yesterday about the process that I just introduced that you followed. Um, and he was fine about that and said keep in touch, let me know how it goes. So he's he is chair of the CDNR is aware of the process that we use. He obviously doesn't know we just we're voting on right now, the motion is for he knows we're choosing. 
So to confirm the amended motion, is that we are going to solicit among the eight different awards steering committees that each of the awards to candidate actually take one individual from their board. Names of those eight individuals will put into the app, and they will be granted and drawn. Those three individuals granted and drawn will serve to be all the first issue on this web page. Plus a deadline for them to respond. And plus a deadline for them to respond. And my only comment about that is that all of us must gather here today perfectly happy if two people came from Board C3, or two people came from, or, or we had somebody from Board C3 and somebody from Board 47, and one person from the board that we have here. Or a person from Board 2, a person from Board 3, and a person from Board 7. Right here. Well, yeah. Of that. yeah, it was less than single or this year, single word NDAs. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Two two thirds of the people could come from one NDA's here. I don't care. I just don't want to be here. Hey, explain how you think that's so. Sorry, so it's not going to be so so if work or seven motions together and yeah. they send in, they're going to send in two, so they could send in they could send in two and then they could work with seven. Right. So it's not that different from what's sitting in the room. I just make it for, for the point of for the point of um, clarification. It's, it's, it's fine. You go forward, but but doing it this way, it's it's definitely possible to keep people from having one steering. Even if you call themselves other steering committees, it's one group that organizes and then you. I, I think. Mr. I think that that's fine. I think okay. that if they're comfortable, um, they're working so tightly together that um, having you know, one person represent a vote. John, this point is that there could be two. That would two, be fine. That two would be coming fine. from four and seven, and then one from five or six or one or I think that would be fine. Too. I'm, I'm good here. Yeah, I think that respects Chris's point with the individual standing committee that you raised. Um, I think it respects the fact that, you know, we might have not even get permission um, from any some of the rules, right? I, I think it's a fair right there as well because it's a bit drawn So I, I would agree. Just a question. I know you guys have decided what the solution is going to like, send out, yeah. This and asking for submissions and, and picking the name of the hat. So that's I'll, I'll write, I will write this, I will write the request. Um, picking the name of the hat will have to be done by at least two people from different boards. Maybe it be from, yeah, I don't, I don't but we'll figure out. Pardon? Yeah, I think it's fine. 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 And just put the name way in the other side of C. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Just so long, so long as a person isn't choosing it. That I think we can fall off. Any further amendments or questions? Or we, but you might think we to try to get along with the bin and the fish. Okay, so to. So can someone clarify exactly what this committee is going to do? Because my comments earlier were assuming that these people were going to join the CDNR standing committee of the state council. Mm -hmm. So if somebody could explain to me what these people are doing. Thank you. Okay, right. I mean, the meaning of sounds, as I understand it, is there is interest on both sides between the city and the MP to better find the relationship and the Rules of engagement for that have a better term. And uh, there are, this would be kind of an informal ad hoc committee of the CDNR. So it would be a subcommittee of the CDNR, comprised of CDNR and committee members for city councilors and members of the representative of the NPAs. Is that the record? And probably, yeah, and probably a CDNR. That's what it's like. That's what CDNR is. Maybe somebody from the city attorney. That's the city action. So, are, are we going to vote on this? So, I mean, call the question, sir. Call the question. All in favor, motion on the table. Say aye. Aye. 
papers, partial path to the child home and communication back for the process that's our Jess, do you feel like you've captured it? Yeah, I read it in the news. Do not pay this. Do you feel like you're okay in the task that we're asking John? Great, thank you. Yes, great. All right, so, um, the next topic is also the one that John has asked for, which is that getting the MPs of the legislature and relationship better. So I will get forward to John's level. I'll make this fast. I'll try to. I don't want the world to be. have 15 minutes. Um, one of the things that I've heard from city councilors and I've heard from the mayor before she was mayor is that there's there are challenges getting the entire delegation in the city of Burlington uh, in Montpelier to actually advocate as a lobbying for the city of Burlington. And it's not clear how often the group of 11 representatives, 11 legislators, there's three um, senators and kind of focusing on the legislators. Uh, it's not clear how often they caucus, it's not clear how often they um, they actually work together to try to influence this, the, the, um, the legislature on the behalf of the world. But I think it's something, I, I think it's something that a group like all of us could actually work on. Um, it's uh, it, it, it's hard to think of another group that's better placed in terms of um, in, in terms of trying to organize this group of legislators uh, to advocate for the city. And so, I just wonder whether other people agree and whether we want to start working on this. Um, I I posted a table which is straight out of the legislature website to show. Well, a list of the members of the uh, of the legislature, and I wrote down what I thought were the wards associated with um, with each legislator. I'm not even sure it's right. But it's just <clears throat> it used to be you could put an address in the little thing and tell you what ward you were. Excuse me, I can't think of. So, what I'm wondering is how well we only have. Um, one, two, three, four of our legislators represented in this group, I think. If I understand that uh, wards two, three, well, maybe you have Jill and Kate and Abby. You have three. Okay. Uh, and actually, uh, Troy actually represents ward two. Uh, his district is that's to the part of three. The part of board three here, Green Street, I should say, that was previously in board two that was added. Oh, yeah, because that's what they're They just said, Fox, we can't pull that. That's right. So, so you got a bunch of them. Is there a way to say how responsive these folks are to the conversation? My my thought was start with the ones who are responsive, even the MPAs who come to the MPAs who talk to people. And then maybe we can get um, a consensus among them and start to work out from there. Try to gather. Um, and, and the first step would be to just say, you know, we're trying to work out this. What do you think? And they would say, oh no, we do it all the time. We launch it. You know, um, but they may say, no, you know, which I can't think you can never talk to them. And then, and then we can try to start reaching out. The other way, the other approach would be to, Pick an issue that we really want to have to see that period and, and then try again, you know, try, you know, try again, uh, every board to work on their legislators, you know, pick one, pick two, four, it's going to be five, uh, but five, uh, to be, you know, to be their voice. And if every, if every, if every steering committee worked on their legislators, maybe we could try to go out and to work them together. Uh, I think this also probably means sitting down with the mayor or mayor, whoever the mayor wants to talk to, because she's got experience. She's been there, she's done that. Um, it's so, a concern she raised. And I believe it's a concern she raised. I don't remember. Um, so, are there any of these folks who you feel are particularly responsible or particularly not responsible to work that's being done at the MPS? I would have to say, from a workplace standpoint, 
Brian is a total no show. We can never say that. And I understand that maybe we're on, we, he, well, we're not on the edge of this district because Troy's in the middle of it. We see Troy a lot. We have two. But you, you all see Brian. Is that right? This is Brian. This is Brian. And then I am uh, an anti I think one of the things that's important to bring up is that a lot of legislators have, in my opinion, they have blinders to what their committee assignments are. And so if you're on um, the education committee, then you'd be in tune with school boards, but not necessarily Burlington City Council. So there's, they're, they're really segmented. In my opinion, I'm not familiar. So I'd be really surprised if there's a Chippy County caucus or a few more grown. So that doesn't mean we can't do it. Or um, we can't have a joint effort to get people to say good things about a bill that we want to pass or what have you. Uh, and also, we could consider actually going down to Montpelier and lobbying. Uh, ourselves, our kind of group that will go down on select days to push for whatever we think our priorities are. Um, groups do that all the time, and it's easy to pick off our um, Burlington representatives or the Chittenden County representatives and say, hey, you think you're going I think that would be very doable. So I, I, I think this is a good idea, um, and I think would, I'd be surprised if, if it's already been done. Mm -hmm. Yes, that question. Mm -hmm. If anybody want to work on this, uh, I don't know. Like, um, I am more than just trying to prepare to have a yellow participation. I like driving about the lobby. It would be great to lobby as the as, as the wards, the all wards, rather than the setting. You know, this is good timing too, in my opinion, because uh, we're coming up to elections this fall, and we have an opportunity to sort of push this notion to people who want to be elected or reelected. Jessica, yeah, I just want to complain. I have to recuse myself from this because I went to the state and I'm like allowed to get involved today. Sort of lobby unit issues. Um, yeah, on a state level. Like locally, I can't, but state level. I think in terms of the process, once we identify the approach the legislation, we think about recognizing the state boards and all very general issues and concerns. I think we could probably take guidance from the city council and the mayor as well. And I think that there are a couple of issues that are more on specific than we could also see that city as well. So, let me just share what I shared with Warmy Scandinavia the other night. So I told them that my suggestion was find two or three things in your order that you'd really like to see work on and go after your city council members consistently. Because the NBAs don't really do that. They never get the government saying, these are the two or three things happening in the city that we really want to see at the schools. Let's say you decided that sidewalk repair was important. Then if your NBA can get together and as a unit go after your city council, you do the same thing with the legislature. You know, what does your NPA want to see happen in the legislature? And so you just prioritize that. And every month you go after your, your legislator and say, This is what we would like you to be working And so you as much as you are interested in doing it. I mean, I guess I would disagree because um, I think, for example, Troy printed out copies of Doug Hopper's staff's report um, about uh, UVM and um, the, the 
policies that you'd be on in terms of housing. And that was really, really helpful. Like Troy, when he meets with us pretty regularly, talks about the work that he does, and it is very much tied to housing in Ward 1, for example. Um, so I think it's I think it's different depending on the board and the personalities and sort of the NPA relationships. I mean, I would be curious to go down and see this list and just hear who is it you can. And that's a starting point, I think, for the, for our study group that's going to work. I think that's a reasonable process of starting. So I want to bring it here from GM, where you can see the uh, tour um, the mayor, I believe, like, for a session the mayor's office. Uh, we have not really had much participation or representation from the budget as it's being created. But I was. So it's representatives, but not senators. Uh, Senator Newland has come to response or twice. Senator Chin and Tom Jones. All right. So it sounds like a job. I will be on the same thing. I just want to go and jump out. What are you talking about? That's it. Uh, NPA's relationship with the local staff is uh, pretty big, guys. We have a local. Yeah, Jonathan's actually um, that was on the top of Brian Pine a little bit. I mean, we're to bring in a little history about why. Sure. Um, <clears throat> we had a uh, developer who wanted to do this going to this one that Chase Street, uh, spill out one of those warrants. And we received it amazingly and uh, responded like within a day. Uh, but it was received on the day of our day. Uh, I may have Danny, if you want to Danny, and I wrote back and I said, uh, well, you know, we're meeting today, we're going to stay, she needs a little tight, but we'll get back to you. Um, I think we could get any other to each other. And he said that, it was great. And, you know, the next thing we saw was that there were notices posted and pasted up around the community about an MPA meeting at the site for making money on the purpose of night, tomorrow, it's tonight. Um, and we didn't, well, we did there, there weren't any of the MPA meetings. And it wasn't um, anything we knew about. Um, but, but it turned out that the developer had done this with the signs up uh, out of an understanding that the developer had of how the process worked. Um, digging into it a little bit, don't lose the plans, I'm like doing a little bit of water here. Um, before I go on, what, what's the requirement for people in the room who aren't in the world wide? What's the requirement that developers should come to the NBA to present their project? I don't know that there's a specific requirement they come to the NBA by recollection is not necessarily the statute. My recollection is, is that they have to come to the NBA and it's able to come to the NBA because of the schedule. It's turkey and they just kind of jump on the chat and kind of find a place to set their own meeting. That's my understanding, but I'm not 100 percent that that's in the statute. That's I don't know if it's in the statute, but it's in it's in the DR, it's in the planning of the DPI documentation. But they have to come to an NPA. No. They have to go to the NPA. No. They have to work to the NPA. And so they use the NPA. And and there's there's a there's an advisory which is suggested to use the NPA. And um and uh but and, and there's a suggestion that they plan ahead so that they have time enough to to, to get it on the NBA's agenda, like for 60 days. Um, and if they can't do that, then they can just go and they, they have to warn it in the sense that they have to make sure, I think within two weeks, that they they contacted all the others and people nearby, but they can hold their own rule. And that, and it's only for major impact. Um, so that was a little bit of a surprise. You never, you know. You know, you know, you know. So, so it was just thought that they really had to come to the vision. The uh, city council has been told me that. Um, city has to turn out. We are. <laughs> I, I think with this guy, it was 
there were a bunch of people on the all awards that wanted to make this a real firm, uh, like signed off meeting with uh, NPAs that he that any NPA that was affected would be uh, presentation would be given, and then they would uh, formally acknowledge that the presentation had been done. Uh, and that was the requirement. Yes. But it, it quickly ran into, I mean, how formal we want to have it. And some people said, well, if we don't like it, we're not going to recognize that meeting and not approve it. And so, therefore, the law person would be stopped. There were other people that said, well, no, we're not really the planning commission and we're not the development review board. So, um, that's not really our role. But our, the purpose is, to let a developer say, I want to do X, and describe what it is, get feedback from the community, and then a per, um, and that feedback will result in a better project. That was the consent. Um, when you say when this will pass, can I just tell what we're going to do being passed the Um I I thought there was something formal in the plan and the um, call for the permitting process that said you have to have some sort of community. I would love to refer to that and then it's going to direct me to a document online, I think. In the DPI, I think. DPI? Yeah. Start trying to start developing the report, as we think. But what I have before, I'll say the camera right now. Is that there's some folks that you know we should be taking time to do these things. Yeah, meetings. My last time I went to before we down a statute, I don't think a lot of the requirements are very simple. We get listed in two places, so I'm going to be a closed board. Right now, so I think I'm clear. We're not going down to 645 on three. That would be medical legal requirements. No requirement to post online using modern day social media. It just has to be posted in two public places. But if you really want to be cool, you can bury it in the Vermont one for the seven days. But legally, you will have that requirements. So the concern was we did not include them on the NBA. They were scheduled these meetings at like seven o'clock in the morning. It was time to get informed and the club get all the legal requirements in order. And we showed up. That was the kind of debate to me. So I just want to put that out there. I think it's So. So I think we kind of think this this ties in very nicely with uh, the agenda item about the 535 agenda item. That this is there's clarification that's necessary. Um, this developer went and spoke with Brian Pike, and Brian said uh, the developer told Brian that he we could the NBA could accommodate him, and uh, Brian said, "Well, it's so good," and. Uh, you know, that's okay, that's legitimate, but it was a little bit of a surprise. Um, so I think it, it feels like this piece has to, has to tie into what the CDNR committee is doing, um, because that, that needs to be clear. Do they need to? Should they? I mean, what should developers come to NDAs? There's a lot of reasons why the NDA is a good place for developers to come. Because it's a broad, broad group that we are just next door neighbors across the street. Uh, they may have more. <laughs> so I think that's why this is going to be a judge. Is that right? Yes. So, what would be the other one we'd be looking for here in terms of this process? Just looking for the money to get them so that they have to come to the NDA? Just looking to get you know, clarity or better understanding. Yeah, when you want clarification. Okay. Uh, because, because in this in this particular case, the NDA did everything consistent with the recommendations. Um, and the developer chose not to follow recommendations and went on his own. And I know Sharon Busher, former city councilor, remembers pushing for this, not as a requirement for NPAs, but as a guideline for developers. Um, what they do constitute to NPAs because he wanted the community, he wanted neighbors to be aware of what was potentially going to happen in their neighborhood to give feedback about it. So I'm not going to give their feedback support. There's no guarantee that the developer has to take the feedback. 
That's true. And, and feedback is, the feedback is in writing that it's up to the DRP to listen to the thing here. Now we found as a war what we had found developers we have shifted and made allowed made changes in their plan because they've come to the many concerns. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't always, as you say, doesn't always No, but based on the policy I'm hearing because that's not getting to the between the staff and that so like It's not, it's, it's not a requirement, it's a suggestion. We'd like to make it a requirement, make it about a certain topic, maybe it's both better. And one question we have asked developers at different points is how does this plan fit into the neighborhood project? How does it fit into the city housing plan? Um, and not everybody knows what that is. Um, and so I think that, that context is a really important question to ask developers, which is, how how does this particular plan development how will it augment the citywide emphasis of the citywide development as we might plan to right oh come on come on so that rather than must like like the legacy please but it's i don't think these reviews were ever intended to really have that kind of context right. all right it was just People in the neighborhood from the NPA give feedback, and then um, the, the the developer, being a smart operator, would say, you know, if I make these minor changes that will make people happy, then I won't get people going to the planning commission saying, don't let them build it. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a sort of it's not as formal as the whole. Uh, zoning are not permitting process, but it's like how do you raise these kids and, um, and go from there? And and we've seen developments have changes because of that awareness. And most for the most part, I don't think that that has pushed all development. Well, at least in part one. I mean, we've had some people come who haven't. Follow through on their, on their their developments, but not because people were picking and screaming about what they wanted to do. Like the guy by the um, car wash there. Right, and right. Mark and Ryan he, yeah, he just for some reason it didn't work. Yeah. But people weren't going to line darts at him. Uh, you know, uh, just got some. He got some feedback. I thought it was. I'm just saying in a larger picture. It seems like about every 10 years we have something that comes that got you. And I would just say that it's been like Um, just another um, I, yeah, I think this just means like a wide discussion for this TV over the multiple yeah, committee that we've already been discussing. Um, it feels very closely related to that matter. So, yeah, I think considering why the longer, but at the same time, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that it's been a while since we've done this. I think that going forward, we're going to have a discussion that, like, Makes the gentleman just come in with a motion or an action. We'd like to see how we can frame it that way. Get this motion, have a discussion on a specific motion. I'll frame it on the contract. Both straight discussion. So, um, any further comments on the NPA's relationship to the local development driver? So I'm just saying that um, one of the reasons that this was put into effect, the developer going to the community. Was because, for example, in the city of Barrie, if you're going to put a big development somewhere, the public would not hear about it until it was already on the schedule of the development. The only people who would hear about it were the BFIs. 
So the attempt in Burlington was basically saying, we're trying to basically notify the public that something's about to happen. And before it gets on the schedule of the DRD, you can do something. Now, it might not help all that much in many cases, but at least there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a wiggle movement here that doesn't exist in any other community in the state. And there, you've got this warning here that something's happening. So that's just my thought. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, all right. Oh, the sure. Not. If we're going to get clarification from CETA, uh, at some point it needs to be in writing. It may not be CETA, but maybe the CETA is not in charge. As a Brian indicated. Okay, well, I don't know why this guy was talking to Brian Cummings. Oh, well, for the NBA. He was complaining about the fact that he couldn't get out of the NBA. He's I mentioned, you know, we usually meet, you know, three weeks before a meeting, start planning. So, we like, I think I did that. I mean, like, mm -hmm. she, you know, and uh, I don't know why. Well, sure. My point is really that the world provides clarification. At some point, we want that to be either reference to statute or handwriting. That same principle, uh, what I want to say to you is to come up during the bylaw discussion, uh, for assuming they not the one prompted by a defensive cluster that we prior to that. Um, we updated, you know, look at a lot of these statutes, the charter, the different ordinances. They were, uh, a lot of it was developed and, and adopted at the time before, like, social media was even a thing. And communication technology is very hard to change the pattern. And maybe if you want to engage with the DRB and have a conversation, is do these and these requirements for these that actually make sense for the time that we live in, or are there other means and opportunities that we could use that would be more effective? Maybe not that it's just in 25 or 30 years before I maybe have the development to focus on the company as well. So that may be another kind of discussion. Any further questions on this topic? Anything else anyone wants to talk about? What we have four minutes left? Or? I, I'm wondering if we could look at what we think is the date of the next meeting and maybe um, make some suggestions at this point about agenda items that would be good to include at the next meeting. Yeah, that, that was my attempt to be first. I kind of dropped the ball. That's right about the past. If the next month would have been Wednesday, it's July, it's July the 31st, and then the next month after that, it's October, it would be Wednesday, October. So it's not going to be a sure the conversation's a little bit sooner. So I'll have a suggestion for what it's not. So, Pascal, are you pretty aware of when, what day of the week, what day of the month, all the MPAs meet because there must be some days that MPAs aren't meeting that we could possibly meet together. Yeah, the MPAs meet every Thursday, um, every first, second, third, and fourth Thursday of the month, and then every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. Um, one thing I'll note is that many of the MPAs tend to meet about a week. After their meeting to talk with the steering committee, so I know we're short seven and eight, first Wednesday of the month. I don't know, maybe that is a discussion to be had, but we know then maybe a steering committee where all boards are going to meet. But yeah, so second, fourth Wednesday of the month, and then all four Thursdays of the month. So first or the third Wednesday might work. Yeah, we, we typically meet the third, but we don't have yeah. to. We can chase you know, once as a steering committee. As a steering committee. Yeah. We don't need to. No. <clears throat> if you look at September, either the first Wednesday or the third Wednesday, probably the third Wednesday, right? The first Wednesday. Yes. Wednesday. 
Um, you just said you should show hands here if you want to have like a regularly scheduled that the other option would be to do it on the Thursday, which would be probably August, which I think would be a more reasonable time. Um, but then we just have to look with me and say Thursdays and schedules. We couldn't do that at the library, but we could do it anywhere else. So Thursdays, that's by two. Uh, does Thursday, I was talking about the seven network folks. That's the day, Thursday months. And how are we thinking about yeah. participation in the school time? Is that a good Sorry, what? Do we have availability for that time? I mean, I think we can find I don't know. I, I, if I were to check now, like, we'd also my own lady. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's the issue. There's a lot of committees and boards that meet on Wednesdays and Thursdays and all the other days of the week. I would say that um, we keep getting involved in the city. It's not just we don't have to be honest. And I think that that's an important question that we do need to set up. Here's why. Because if we are part of city government, we absolutely are subject to building law, which has implications for us and things with decision making and scheduling. But Jack is the whole most of the issues of law. And if we are a private organization, we are not subject to this. And I think that as a matter of good practice, transparency is good. So even if the NPA is also did become a part of determining a fraud organization, I'm still thinking, you know, honoring the spirit of what would be a good practice to take. From my understanding, as of now, like the they're considered part of city government, and that's why they have the meeting law. That's why you have me here. That's why you receive funding from the city. Um, so, as far as I know, you know, that's that's what the city use that case as kind of like. Well, I think the city's perspective is different from some of the individual members. You know, we don't just have to set their budget. So this is Stella. Hi, sorry, I'm late. Thanks, Stella. I'm on the steering committee for Word 8. I'm a student at UVM. Hey, awesome, thank you. It's good to be here. 
in future. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, All of those. Oh, she cares. Everyone have a good time.